Market recovers from opening uh, lows. It opened lower on weak global queues, but now it's flattened out. Uh, oil and gas stocks gain, FMCG gains, while IT and real estate stocks drag. The Nifty Bank, a uh, relative underperformer. Adani Group stocks gain after the group repays share back debt worth close to 7,300 crores ahead of its maturity, that which was April 2025. They're releasing share pledge in Adani Ports, Adani Enterprises, Adani Transmission, and Adani Green. Krishna Diagnostics surges today on the news that the company has operationalized 100 pathology centers as was part of its BMC contract, which it won in January. The company will provide lab investigation facilities for BMC dispensaries and hospitals in Mumbai. Bharatman Special Steel's gains in trade on news that the company has tied up a Toyota's global supply chain to start mass production of steel. Shriram Finance gains uh, after a 3.16% equity trade versus worth 14.50 crores change hands at an average price of 12.30 rupees per share. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that a private equity investor is the seller and DIIs as well as FIIs are significant buyers in the block deal. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Nigel D'Souza and joining me as always is Mangla Malu. Well, we've got a power pack show. We've got two managements for you. So let's get straight to the first management on the show. GTL Industries, they recently issued close on 1.3 crore warrants to non-promoter entities at a price of 300 rupees per share. Out of which 25% has already been called and the rest will be called within 18 months. To understand what's the outlook from here on, we're joined by Mr. Pranav Singla, who is the executive director of the company. Hi Pranav, uh, good morning and first of all wishing you and your team happy Holi, uh, wishing you all the best. But let's, oh, good morning. Happy Holi to you as well. let's focus on uh, the rationale first, you know, of you raising this uh, money. Could you tell us the entities that you've mentioned, are they HNIs, are they family members, who are they precisely, point number one. And point number two, when you initially came out of this announcement, you all were talking about 400 crores of fundraise. It appears that scaled down to around 384 crores. Is that correct? Uh, yes, let me come, come, come on that. So the total number of allottees, earlier that was 77. But as the allotment went through, the allottees were brought down to 69. The reason for this was because some of the people were disqualified from entering the preferential. There's some guidelines in which six months people, who the people who've been trading the share in the past six months mm -hmm. cannot apply for the warrants. So the same people, the ones who have been cancelled out, eight people, so they were trading the JTL in the past six months. So that's why they were disqualified from the category and they couldn't enter the list. And if you talk about the people, it's a mixture of h and institutes. Like uh, uh, there, is, there is one institute called Carterfield, so that's there in the list as well. So that comes under the institute as category as well. You know, uh, we see a large amount of uh, this going to non-promoter entities. But at the same time, your second name is Singla. We have Ashok Singla, HUF as well. So just wanted to understand if there are some uh, family relatives, promoter controlled entity, if not promoter entities itself, which have been allotted shares. And how much would that account for in this overall 384 crore uh, worth fundraise? No, there's nothing from our relatives or something or the other. There are many Singla, so probably he's one of those. And uh, this all was managed by our merchant bankers, so mm. all these names were given by those, so okay. it's just those people. All right, uh, Pranav, uh, you know, the purpose you're mentioning of raising this money is to retire some debt and also to raise uh, the capacity. But I'm looking exactly. at debt, it's not too much. Is there a possibility that you're looking actually at some inorganic growth? So right now, uh, as we mentioned, that we have a plan to reach a... Uh, a capacity of 1 million tons. Hmm. Right. And uh, so this uh, capex would be uh, highly, highly be going towards that as well. And if any plant come, arises in a situation where it is viable for us and giving us good potential, we'll be in the front foot and acquiring it in the same phase as well. No, but Pranav, the, currently the plan to go from around 400,000 to around 1 million tons, that's already, you know, laid out, right? That's all organic. So no, the, so the plan has been laid out like uh, it's going to be greenfield operations. But if any plant arises as, as and when, where we can uh, just uh, acquire it, we won't be shying up from that as well. But that I, I, I all in talks as of now. I, and, I you know, the, st like, the yeah, streets, you know, going... Pranav, the streets initial understanding was you're raising this money. Maybe you're looking at some inorganic growth. Has that fallen through? We are in talks with somebody and so there might be a news coming in, but uh, I, I'll keep you posted for the news as well. Can you tell us a little about... Uh... It's really hard for me to disclose the names and everything right now. Okay, uh, a rough size, That's that's all that we need. No, there's nothing in size right now like that I can explain you in exact words right now. 
but uh, it'll be a 1 lakh ton capacity. That's 1 lakh ton capacity. And uh, you're, you're in advanced stages. I presume maybe in a couple of quarters, uh, we'll yeah, have a lot of clarity. Yeah. Yes. All okay. Right. And Pranav, you know, I'm just looking at your company. You're trading at around two times sales. So that acquired asset as well, will you looking to be paying something in that vicinity? Price yes, we'll be, we'll be looking to pay in that facilities only. Okay, right. all right. And where could this plant be? Which part of India geographically, if you could uh, tell us, what is your target market? So right now I can give you the information about the brownfield locations that we're doing that's in Maharashtra and Raipur. But it'll be really hard for me to give uh, emphasize on the locations and everything right now. All right, okay, fair enough. Uh, you know, the other concern is that uh, this fundraise that you've done, um, uh, over the next 18 months you will call for the other... Uh, 75% uh, of this fund, etc. as well. Your current market cap close to around 2,000 odd crores. Uh, you've raised funds which dilute your equity up to 25%. Promoter shareholding from 72% has fallen all the way down to 44%. You also have an impending merger with Chetan Industries. So with all of this happening, where does promoter stake finally settle? So right now, as of today, the promoter holding stands at around 43%. Mm -hmm. And if you got post-diluted merger and warrant holding, it's going to further increase by 7%. So after the scenario of 18 months, you should see our holding going up to 50%. So okay. in 18 months, it goes up to 50%. And uh, thereafter, will the promoters be looking to buy any more? Uh, because in this round of fundraise, promoters take uh, actually dilute it because uh, the amount has been raised from all non-promoter entities. Yeah, so we couldn't enter the warrants this time because uh, there's a clause again for promoters as well. Mm. That because we uh, recently did a Kotak Mahindra block deal a mm. few months back. So we were ineligible to enter the warrants category right now, all the promoters. So that's a major reason that we couldn't enter. So in the f further coming months, you can see the promoters putting in some money as well. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, and uh, when we spoke last time around, we were quizzing you about institutional participation. You said there was some, and that's reflected in the shared holding pattern as well. So we take note of that. Kotak's name has uh, appeared in there. Let's uh, wind this down then with targets for the coming year. F523, earlier you were talking about, you know, volumes of around 2,75,000. Uh, That's post that merger with Chetan Industries. So I'm guessing that merger takes place and you do you get to that mark with uh, EBITDA per ton guidance of around 4,500, 4, around 5,500 rupees per ton. And also for F524, you know, you were guiding for a, for a, a fairly decent number of around 3.5 lakh. Do you stick to that as well? Definitely, we have a healthy order book right now for three months as well. And we are well on track to achieve the volumes that we've mentioned before. So uh, I think, and the merger is yet to happen, and that's going to happen on 16th of March, because that's the date mentioned at the on River NCLT in Chandigarh. So we see all things coming in place together, and we should be expecting what we mentioned before. So 2.75 lakh for this year, and for next year, at least 3.5 lakh. 3.5 lakh plus. Okay, 3.5 lakh plus, and approximately a bit up a ton of around 5,000? Uh, around 4,500 to 5,000 range. All right. Uh, Pranam, thank you so much for joining in and giving us all those details. Once again, uh, festive greetings for you and your team members. Uh, we will continue our conversation as and when you make the announcement of the company that you're in talks uh, with for acquisition. With that, take a short break. Come back, get you more on the markets, individual stocks, but also another management. We have Rishi Pilani, who's the chairman and managing director of Ganesh Benzoplast, joining in to discuss their business outlook. Welcome back. You're watching us here on Chartbusters. Let's get chatting with the management of uh, Ganesh Benzoplast. Rishi Pilani, who's chairman and managing director, joins in to discuss their outlook for the business going forward. Rishi, thanks a lot for joining in. Before we talk about business itself, you know, the recent order that you got uh, from uh, the arbitrator on the Goa Mormugao Port Trust issue, it's about 7.66 crores plus uh, simple interest of about 12% on excess lease rental paid by you. Just wanted to understand... Um, one, is this uh, the final order that has come in or the uh, counterparty can appeal in other courts? Secondly, what exactly is the total amount? Uh, is there any more coming? 7.66 is a small amount plus interest and all these other things. And by when does that money come in? So, uh, good morning. So, the yes, the party, since this is an arbitration award, the party has a right to challenge it in the high court. Um, but the challenge grounds are usually supposed to be very strict. So, uh, and see the approximate amount that we hope to get out of this is somewhere between 13 to 15 crores. Uh, but the more important part is what the arbitrator has held is that, uh, you know, whatever contentions our company had uh, were, are correct so that the land will continue to be leased with us for a longer time. Uh, 
till uh, uh, till our lease period expires in 2030. So that's also a very significant victory for us. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Rishi. Uh, and good to speak to you after a while. Uh, you know, there's been some fund action as well with Malabar going ahead and picking up stakes. So clearly funds as well are pretty interested in business. Which brings us to your capacity expansion. I understand that you were looking to add closer to 19,000 KL to your current capacity. As per your last presentation, it's around 309,000. So could you tell us whether this capacity expansion has come on stream? And post this expansion, what does your capacity go to? 328,000? So it's it's not 19, it's 18,000. And okay. yes, post that expansion, it goes to 327. Uh, Has it come and, on stream? Uh, it'll come on stream in first quarter of uh, 2024. That's a JNPT, right? It's a JNPT. Yes. Perfect. Because JNPT already were at 100% utilization, Cochin 95%, Goa 40%. Just wanted to understand, uh, you know, when do you increase your utilization at Goa and uh, reach optimal uh, utilization in Cochin? And when that happens, what does the overall revenue of the company look at, at a high uh, capacity utilization? See, 95% uh, plus is, uh, we would, uh, you know, that's quite optimal. Uh, right. But yes, in Goa, uh, the thing is, the challenge is the mining ban due to which uh, we are, uh, we, but we are do trying. So this year we started molasses export from Goa, which has definitely helped increase our uh, capacity utilization and our revenues. Mm. Overall, in terms of once this kicks in, the new capacity utilization kicks in and everything, we expect to go to uh, an increase of revenue of about anywhere between 15 and 20 crores this year. Okay. This is the additional capacity that uh, 18,000 that and, we're talking about? 15 to and the, yeah, and the increase in capacity utilization in Goa with a combined of that. Okay, so increase of so the total is fifteen to twenty crores, and I understand that the JNPT additional capacity comes at better margins. Yes, it does come at better margins because our fixed costs are not uh, uh, in the same proportion; they are divided over the entire capacity. Okay, all right. You know, you had acquired close to around I think eleven acres is what you have. Uh, uh, what is this going to be used for? Could you tell us whether it's for expansion in LPG? Because that appears to be a trigger, and I think in a couple of co calls that you'll have had with analysts, you'll have mentioned that as well. LPG could be the next big trigger. So could you confirm that this 11 acres that you'll have, is it going to be used for LPG? Point number one. Point number two, what is the CAPEX? If it's going to be LPG, what is the CAPEX you're going to be, uh, you know, going, uh, going to be putting towards this LPG expansion? Go ahead. So uh, about eight acres or so of that is going to be used for LPG. Uh, in that, the CAPEX envisage is anywhere between 450 crores. Mm -hmm. uh, that and the capex is going to be almost like a mix of uh, 30, 40, uh, 30 to 70 debt or uh, debt and uh, equity mix, uh, internal resources, not equity, but our internal uh, resources. So, so like we, if you look at it, we already have a bank line sanctioned of about 275 crores for it, and we have about 80 crores in cash balance and the outstanding right. work receivables. And over the next two years, we need to fund only then about another hundred and uh, another about seventy-five to hundred crores, where we are generating about cash of about sixty to seventy crores a year. And usually, the capex of uh, four fifty crores in a better business prospect yields what kind of asset turns? Uh, see, generally, our target is that we should uh, get the money back in about three to four years. That's our target. Always. All right. Payback period of three to four years. Also, I wanted to understand about the railway logistics business. I mean, you have made a foray into it. FY22 revenue was just about 30-odd cross 10% margins. I'm sure that could be a growth area as well. So what are your targets out there? How, how, how fast do you grow in the rail business? What are the optimal margins you're looking at? See, rail business uh, generally has a very high gestation period, but then it has a longevity of contracts. Exactly. The reason is because we have to convince our customers to switch over from their traditional methods to rail. But, uh, you know, we are already working with two big uh, customers to convert to rail. Right now, we are already working with Cargill, which is one of the hmm. uh, leading. So our target would be that over the next two years, currently we are moving about 0.25 million tons a year. We want to grow that to about 0.5 to 0.6 million tons in oh. the next two years. All right. A final question. A couple of questions from Maya and Rishi before we let you yes. go. Your chemical business seems to have turned around, and that's been a bit of a drag. Do you expect it to continue to remain 
in in the profit train. I'm looking at it on an average for last few quarters. You're doing around four crores of profit. So does the chemical business continue to remain a bit positive? And also, you know, the last time, many years ago, you joined us on the show. You were telling us about that demerger. But there have been court cases. It's not getting cleared. By when do you expect this to get cleared out and have two separate listed entities? Go ahead. So the chemical business is for doing well, and which we always said that once the capacity, as the capacity utilization keeps going up, the business naturally makes more money. Uh, the products have demand. And regarding the demerger, as you're aware, that's subsidized. There is a court case going around along it. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a very firm timeline. But what we have done is we segregated the financials of the chemical business right. into a wholly owned subsidiary of GBL. So we have tried to sort of try to create a different entity which houses the chemical. But right now, it's not demerged into a separate listed entity, like you're saying, and there is no real timeline to it because it depends on when the court orders come in. All right. So uh, now that there is no timeline, but you've done this uh, wholly owned subsidiary, just wanted to understand if uh, another way of uh, unlocking value could be bring in some financial or strategic investor in the wholly owned subsidiary, at least for the street to realize the sort of value that there is in either of these businesses. Uh, because demerger currently is uh, out of question because of the uh, you know reasons you mentioned. Yes, so, so definitely uh, we are looking at, uh, you know, first ramping up our chemical capacity up to 85 to 90 percent. That's our first target to really uh, uh, come out with the full growth potential of the company. And then, yes, then we can look at having a strategic of a financial partner okay. join in there. OK, but the chemical business in the near term stays in profit rate. Yes. Good speaking to you, Rishi. Thanks so much for joining. And the stock has had Thank a big run in the last few months. And... For the timing, at least, business prospects are looking up, but the LPG trigger is going to be most crucial to see how things move from year on. For the time being, we slip in a short break. You come back. We continue our focus on the markets. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back here, tuned in to Chartbusters here on CNBC TV 18. By the way, keep an eye out on the broader markets. A couple of stocks are doing a thing of their own. Balram Puccini is feeling sweet today. Just take a look at that. Up 4% as we speak. Spikes to the high point of the day. And Manapuram Finance as well is doing pretty well. That's up close to around a percent and a half. But the entire move has come in the last 30 minutes. In today's chart, or both the two stocks should be up for you on the screen. For the time being, though, we shift focus to our special segment where we get you a few ideas for profit from Money Control Pro. Bharat uh, Gianni joins us to talk about a stock that is tracking closely. Bharat, over to you. Today's ideas would be AI Hotels Limited. The company posted better than expected results in the quarter gone by. Revenues were 15% above the pre COVID levels. Strong pickup in the room rates, coupled with improved occupancies, led to the strong top line performance. If you see the destination wise, both the lizard destinations as well as the city destinations saw a strong demand traction. The margins were 400 basis points above the pre-COVID levels. This was driven by lower employee costs as well as lower power and fuel expenses. The domestic tourist uh, demand is expected to remain strong as the company has received strong future reservations. If you talk about the foreign tourist uh, demand, it is still below the pre-pandemic levels, but is expected to pick up given that the visa-related issues with certain countries have been sorted out and the COVID-19 pandemic is behind us. The company has unveiled a healthy room addition pipeline and aims to add about 20% uh, room inventory over the next few years. If we talk about the valuations, the stock is trading at an EV by EBITDA of 16 times, it's FY24 projected estimates. The valuations are at discount to its historical trading range and are hence attractive. Investors should add the stock in the portfolio. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that, Bharat. With that, uh, we come to a close of Chart Busters. But before we wrap up on this show, both Nigel and me would like to thank our all-women production crew on the International Women's Day. In fact, uh, you may be wondering, is just Nigel and me on this show? No, it takes a lot more to produce this show. Our producers, our directors, our camera crew, as well as the guys sitting in uh, you know, the newsroom, most of them are women, and we're extremely proud of that. More power to all of y'all, and uh, stay with us because trading arts, a path back lady special coming up on the Go other well. side. Stay with <laughs> us.